and welcome to the Cathedral of Our Lady of Victory as we celebrate the first Sunday of Advent. The processional hymn is number 226, Wake, O Wake, Sleep No Longer, number 226. Together, let us stand and begin our celebration of faith as you are invited to face the foyer of the church. Dear friends, the church joyfully welcomes today those who will be received into the order of catechumens. In the months to come, they will prepare for the initiation into the Christian faith by baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist. We also greet those who are already one with us in baptism, now wish to complete their Christian initiation through confirmation and Eucharist and be received into full communion with the Catholic Church. For all of these, we give thanks and praise to the God who had led them by various paths to oneness in faith. My dear candidates and catechumens, you are welcomed in the name of Christ. And so I ask you, what is your name? Derek. And what do you ask of God's church? Faith and understanding. And what does this offer you? Peace, happiness, and love. What is your name? David Flodin. What do you ask of God's church? Faith and guidance. And what does this offer you? Peace. What is your name? Faith. What do you ask of God's church? And what does this offer you? Peace. What is your name? Catherine. And what do you ask of God's church? Strangers. And what does this offer you? Mm-hmm. What is your name? Brittany. What do you ask of God's church? Guidance. And what does this offer you? What is your name? Dara. And what do you ask of God's church? To receive spiritual guidance and to coordinate with the community of faith. And what does this offer you? Happiness and peace. God is our creator, and in him all living things have their existence. He enlightens our minds so that we may come to know and worship him. He has sent his faithful witness, Jesus Christ, to announce to us what he has seen and heard, the mysteries of heaven and earth. Since you acknowledge with joy that Christ has come, now is the time to hear his word so that you may possess eternal life by beginning in our company to know God and to love your neighbor. Are you ready with the help of God to live this life? Those of you who seek to complete your Christian initiation and be received into the full communion of the Catholic Church, are you prepared to listen to the apostles' instruction, gather with us for prayer, and join us in the love and service of others? Sponsors, you now present these candidates and catechumens to us. Are you and all who are gathered here with us ready to help these catechumens and candidates find and follow Christ? Father of mercy, we thank you for these, your servants. You have sought and summoned them in many ways, and they have turned to seek you. You have called them today, and they have answered in our presence. We praise you, Lord, and we bless you.
Receive the sign of the cross on your foreheads. It is Christ himself who now strengthens you with this sign of his love. Learn to know him and follow him. sign of the cross on your eyes that you may see the glory of God. Receive the sign of the cross on your lips that you may respond to the word of God. Receive the sign of the cross over your heart that Christ may dwell there by faith. Receive the sign of the cross on your shoulders that you may bear the gentle yoke of Christ. Receive the sign of the cross on your hands that Christ may be known in the work which you do. Receive the sign of the cross on your feet that you may walk in the way of Christ. I sign you with the sign of eternal life in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the cross and resurrection of your Son, you have given life to your people. Your servants have received the sign of the cross. Make them living proof of its saving power and help them to persevere in the footsteps of Christ. We ask this through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer, you are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking before you while you wrought awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they have not heard of from of old. No ear has ever heard, no eye ever seen, any God but you 
doing such deeds for those who wait for him. With that, you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of you in our ways. Behold, you are angry, we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves, and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to cling to you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us to our guilt. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you the potter. We are all the work of your hands. The word of the Lord. <laughs> A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge, as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore. You do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. The Gospel of the Lord. Every day we have the opportunity to practice our waiting skills. Now granted, oftentimes we do so reluctantly, but we certainly have a lot of opportunities to practice them. At this particular time of the year, we know that we wait in lines at stores. We wait at a doctor's office. We wait at a bank. We wait for our children. We wait for our spouse. We wait for the repairman. We wait for packages to arrive. We wait for our paycheck. We wait for dinner. Of course, we wait for Christmas like children do. Whatever it may be, we're always waiting. And we have an opportunity to practice doing so. And so the question for us in this time of Advent is not whether or not we're going to wait because we will. The question for us to ponder upon is, how do we wait? Someone once said that you can tell a lot about a person by the way he or she handles three things, a rainy day, lost luggage, and tangled Christmas tree lights. I would say that we can learn a lot of lessons and a lot about ourselves in this time of Advent by looking deeper into how we go about the waiting process. I certainly thought about that yesterday. I had to go into one of the stores to buy something. I don't know why I did it on a Saturday, but I did. And I was waiting in that line, and of course, I'm the one that gets the wobbly wheel on the basket. And then I get all, either the new clerk are the one that's the slowest clerk in the entire store. And so I waited, and I waited, and I waited. And I thought about the waiting, because just prior to that, I had gone to the bank to make a quick deposit to take care of some things. And the person in front of me, and I hope he's not watching on television or here in church, but man, it took a long time. Whatever it was, that chute kept going up and down and up and down. I thought, this is it, right? I put my car into drive, it, and then it went up again, up the chute. We wait. And it does say a lot about our patience level. It says a lot about ourselves. Because I don't know if you realized it, but when you're waiting, do you know that by the time you get, if you're at the back of the line in the store and you get to the register, to the checkout, do you know that you can pray a rosary? I've done that before. It's very calming. And then I think, why don't I do that more often instead of getting all upset and impatient about it? Because I can't make the check, the clerk go any faster. I can't just bully myself up to the front of the line. There's nothing I can do except wait. And so why not use it as a great opportunity? On our phones, there's wonderful apps from the Catholic Church are those associated with, with the Catholic religion, and you can download the entire Bible. Do you know how much scripture you can read while waiting in line? So it really is a matter of 
how we wait. That's what Jesus is telling us. In fact, all of the readings today on this first Sunday of Advent speak about this very process. The prophet Isaiah speaks about that waiting that took place before the Messiah came. What was it like in that first waiting period before Jesus was born? And he said, would that you might meet us, Lord, during doing right, that we were mindful of you in our ways. Isaiah was already instructing the people, the Messiah is coming. God is going to send to us our Savior, and this is how you wait. Staying busy, doing the right things, being mindful of what you do in all your ways, and being reminded always that the Lord is our Father. And he writes, we are the clay and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hands. That's waiting in anticipation, waiting in the expectation that the Lord, our God, will take care of us. Good words for us as we wait for the second coming of Jesus. Those two weeks of Advent now, we focus on the second coming. In the last two weeks of Advent, we look at that first coming as we get closer to celebrating again the beautiful solemnity of Christmas. But it's all the same question for us. How do we wait? Jesus says in the parable, in this short passage from the Gospel of Mark, he said, be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. He said, it's like a man traveling abroad. He says, he places his servants in charge of their work that they must do, and he puts the gatekeeper to be on watch. Jesus will come again for us, and we have our work to do. We have our families to raise. We have our spouses to love. We have our neighbor to reach out to to be watchful, to live in anticipation of the Lord's coming is to be mindful of what we're doing and taking responsibility of what is placed before us. Not waiting impatiently, but waiting for the Lord and trusting that he will continue to guide us and help us as we do the work entrusted to us, as we live the life that he has given to us as a free gift so that we can truly take this time of Advent to ask ourselves in these four weeks, am I a good waiter? Am I a good patient person? How do I go about waiting in life? And can I do better? And that's why the beauty of this season in which all the flowers are removed and the priest puts on purple vestments to remind us that this is a time of reflection and a penitential time. The Gloria is not sung. The music changes, and all is brought together so that we can take four weeks of the year and to truly delve a little bit deeper onto our faith journey and to ask ourselves, are we being mindful of how we wait for the Lord so that we can hear clearly what Jesus says to us? What I say to you, I say to all, Watch. I invite our candidates and catechumens to come forward. My dear friends, this community now sends you forth to reflect more deeply upon the Word of God which you have shared with us today. Be reassured of our loving support and prayers for you, and we look forward to that day when you will share fully in the Lord's table.
in faith, let us profess what we believe as followers of Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God of the Son of God, born of the Father for all ages, God of God, light of light, true God of true God, begotten. Every day we wait, and we wait for the Lord's coming again, and we do so knowing that God's grace is with us to sustain us and to help us. And so asking the Lord to give us the strength we need to persevere in our faith, we entrust to the Lord our needs and prayers. For our Mother Church, May she use this time of the holy session of Advent to herald the coming of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord For world leaders, may they experience an increased awareness that all power comes from above. We pray to the Lord. Lord For the catechisms and candidates of our parish, may they undertake with generous hearts and souls whatever God may ask of them and feel our sincere and unfailing support. We pray to the Lord. Lord that God our Father may reveal his Son to them more and more during this Advent season and beyond. We pray to the Lord. Lord that their hearts and ours may become more responsive to the needs of others, especially the abandoned and hopeless. We pray to the Lord. For the family of Mary Nell Schrader, may they may be consoled by the Lord in their grief, we pray to the Lord. For all the faithful departed and for the soul of Richard and Annabelle Nebel in August Hermes, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. For the needs listed in our prayers, our parish intentions, and for those we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Father, we are grateful for this beautiful season of Advent. We seek to surrender all to you, to open our hearts more fully to your grace, so that we can truly be prepared to celebrate the gift of Christmas. Help us, Father, to always wait in anticipation with patience and with love, determined each day to live our faith according to your will. And we ask this in all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. The hymn for the presentations of the gifts is number 216, O Lord of Light, number 216. <laughs>
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Except we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us. And may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Brendan, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him, and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent, and enrich you with his blessings. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Our recessional hymn is number 328, God's Blessings Sends Us Forth.